Now, you also said that everything was going down in 2022, that this was the everything bubble. Energy, however, was on the up. It was the only positive sector for the year, up around 59%. Now, firstly, Harry, let me just say that I applaud anyone that actually sticks his neck out there, gives a specific prediction and a timeline. And you always do that, so credit to you there. Now, again, we spoke in May, and again, you reiterated that this everything bubble was going to burst, that everything was going to go down, all stocks, all crypto, all coming crashing down. That's only been partly true, as we just touched on, energy was a good performing sector. Since May, the S&P has fallen by only about, you know, three and a half percent, give and take on the day. The crypto sector at large did shave off almost a trillion dollars in market cap, falling by around 45 percent. Now, the magnitude of your predictions did not quite turn out as expected. You said you were expecting a 40 percent decline in stocks in 2022 and then a gradual decline down to 86 percent from the S&P all time high in 2021. Now, again, to be clear, I fully, fully respect you for having the gumption to give non-vague answers and forecasts that are specific. And to be fair, you did say that these crashes are going to come in waves and your timeline for the overall crash is over a two-year period, give or take. So yes, 2022 was brutal. You correctly said no new highs, but it wasn't quite as brutal, quite as ugly as you expected. So why do you think that is? What do you think prevented a more severe crash from happening in 2022? Well, first of all, the, the, the index I track the most, you know, especially in these times, the NASDAQ has been down 38%. And, and one of the things I look for, I, I had to study bubbles because, you know, my early research was more about demographics. When did generations spend more and why, the, why we were going to be to see the greatest boom in history because the baby boom was such a large generation. But bubbles have their own logic. And then they go, they usually last about five years and then they crash twice, twice as fast. But, but the way, the only way you know, especially since the government has been pushing this and pushing this and pushing it every time there's a slowdown or the markets crash at all, they just stimulate harder. So they've been feeding this bubble. You don't know if bubbles really crash until you get about a 30 to 40% first crash. So that's why it was critical to me when finally in 2022, the NASDAQ, which is the lead major index for me, was down 34% and then ended up with a new low after that down 38%. That told me, and, and I could finally say to my subscribers, look, this bubble has finally burst. It, it has started to burst. Now, a bubble of this magnitude, like 1929 or, or like 1972, which was not a bubble, but it was a long-term peak, okay? I mean, it takes about two and a half, three years for the whole crash to happen okay so all we've seen so far and, and we have seen it that first crash like you said the, the s p was down i mean 20 some percent uh at its worst and nasdaq down 38 percent as worth and then it looks like to me we're in the next wave down we've been going more sideways since june of 2022 and it looks like to me we're starting the next wave down the next wave down is what's going to really say that something different is happening. This is not a correction. And I think we are in that next wave starting in the next so many months, we'll see that. That'll take us down where we'll be down 50 to 60% and things like the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. And now you'll know this is not a correction. This is a major crash. So, so we're still in the process. I feel like the ultimate low at this point for stocks is likely to be, if I had to pick a day, I'd say it's like summer, like July or so, 2024. So so we're still in the early stages and we still have, and, and I need a confirmation at this point to know that this crash is continuing and will go a lot deeper. We need to break the last low, which again, I'm, I'm tracking the NASDAQ as my number one index, 10,088. Now we bounced, that, that was the last low. We bounced from there and, and, and we're about 8% above that now but it would not take long to get there. We break that 10,088 and that's when we'll see the next wave confirmed and it should get nasty pretty quick after that. And then we'll be deep into something we have not seen since 2000, 2002 and some of those other previous crashes we talked before. So 
So it is happening. Now, now why does this not happen? Governors are fighting this with everything they've got. I mean, it had, there is never, the Great Depression only saw a little bit of stimulus. Once we, once we got down so low in early 2009, the Federal Reserve and central banks around the world just pulled out the guns. They've been stimulating in higher and higher amounts, $10 trillion just since COVID, okay, before they started to tighten. And fi finally, that's when they finally blew it. They were stimulating steadily enough to get away with it, but when they panicked on COVID, $5 trillion in monetary and then $5 trillion in fiscal, and fiscal is far more potent to inflation, then all of a sudden we get this 9.1% inflation when we've been scraping 1% to 2%, which again, my forecast said way back in the 80s, we would go down to near zero inflation um, because of the slower and slower workforce growth is slowing in our economy. So, so, so that's where we're at. Now, they've been fighting this since 2009, stimulating more and more. But, but since where they blew it, even in that stupid strategy, from my point of view, that it has to fail because you can't live on stimulus forever, they overdid it in COVID and they were forced to tighten. And, and now that they're tightening, they're tightening into an economy that from my measurements, I, I've got the best fundamental indicator I've ever seen in history. And I'd love to see somebody challenge it. This whole 46 year lag for peak spending that shows when generation is going to spend more like, like, like the Bajo generation 42 to 68, baby boom 83 to 2007 and why we went into a slowdown in 2008, and why it took so much stimulus. And, and we still, every time they pull back, we go down. We're still in a weak period until 2024 when the millennials come along. So, so I think that this, this tightening is going to cause the economy and stocks to react faster than they think, and they're going to be now behind the eight ball and turning around, and, and, and everybody's looking for a pivot. They can't just turn around and pivot on a dollar. Let's let's start unpack some of what you said there because you've made a couple of great points that I do want to dive deeper into. So, firstly, yeah, the Nasdaq is down around thirty-one percent, give or take, since it's all-time high. Thirty-eight percent at worst, and that's some I can guarantee you on now. Thirty-eight percent was what it was at worst. The ten thousand eighty-eight was the low, and it's down what ten point eight percent since we last spoke in May. Now, why the Nasdaq? as opposed to the S&P 500. Why is that your overall metric for where the well, market and the economy is going yeah. at large? Well, the NASDAQ is more volatile. It's more the tech stocks, the more uh, aggressive stocks. Um, so it's going to go up more when it goes up and it's going to go down faster. And in the S&P 500, it's almost like when things start to look questionable, like in the last year, people say, OK, well, I'm not going to get out of stocks altogether. Although, of course, I've been advising that for a while. They'll get into savers. So, so the S&P 500 is seen as more stable as the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000 small caps are the more volatile indexes, which, which go up the most and go down the most. And, and that's why I'm tracking the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is the lead index here that, that, that's, that's leading the way. And the S&P follows. And, and in the end, they'll all be down 80 80% or more. But, but the NASDAQ has been leading this crash. And, and that's what you would expect. 